but that can be protected by copyright is what you maybe what you consider as expression or cultural expression. Well, actually, there are two types of uh, protection that can be sought. The first one is defensive protection, and then the second one is positive, positive protection. Are you familiar with that? I'm afraid I'm not really familiar with that, but if I may um, assist you in answering, I will try my best. Okay, yeah. So, regarding the defensive, is uh, to stop people outside the community to acquiring intellectual property over the traditional knowledge. And then the second one, uh, related to positive protection, is granting the right that empower communities to promote their traditional knowledge, control its uses, and benefit from its commercial exploitation. So, uh, what is the best system for Indonesia? I believe that's, uh, it will be on a case and uh, case per case basis. I believe that. that was for this particular presentation that I bring on the this discussion. I would like to bring forward the positive protection, as we would like to give them the more than if there is a commercialization based on the traditional knowledge and so on and so forth. Very fast. A protection to produce for other traditional knowledge or traditional other traditional heritage. Okay. Well, the second question regarding the issues of uh, was it, do you think that by giving the was it the the protection of traditional knowledge, yeah, it would uh, well, yeah, it uh, it would diminish the public domain, and well, it would uh, discourage people yeah to use the traditional knowledge yeah uh, and to have benefit from using the traditional knowledge. Um, by giving the protection of traditional knowledge. Uh, Madam, I believe if we want to enforce the defensive that maybe it can diminish the public domain and discourage people from using it. But nonetheless, we would like to protect them for a commercialization without giving them the uh, benefit. So perhaps if the Chinese party was not willing to come forward with a good intent, they would come back and think, oh, now I have to give them benefit. But, they, but that is what they currently do. And therefore, who is like to protect this traditional knowledge to give it back again towards them, the traditional knowledge that they already possess, and how to maximize its implementation for their agricultural sectors. Okay. Um, well, do you think that uh, <coughs> Indonesia have the database for the traditional knowledge? Uh, yes, we have. How do you know? uh, I look forward to the DKI databases, and therefore, what I notice is that while well, there is a database for the communal intellectual property, it only mainly covers intellectual food or other intellectual property communities. But then I only find several or even one traditional knowledge which students who actually belong from South Sulawesi, which I notice this as a major problem here. Nothing. How we have a lot of traditional knowledge with very less of recognition and recognition. So, uh, considering your your proposal here, yeah, do you have any was it the specific uh, action yeah that you will uh, you will bring to convince the government to support your program? River, I believe the government will is already there as they just enacted the government regulation like last December. And I think it's already a good start. And how to convince it is to make them reflect back on how much potential that we have and how much regional knowledge that we could use for to make the agricultural sectors even better. Also further noting, Madam, that the agricultural sectors of Indonesia 
has been contributed a lot of its people's daily income. And therefore, to make a more stronger agriculture sectors, but to make it more climate resilient and utility than what we already have, I think uh, our traditional knowledge will be a big major achievement for us to do as at the end. The cross productivity and the sales have been we could further import it from a lot of traditional places in Indonesia, it would be cool back to achieve the or to the income of the government. And therefore, it would benefit us or the government as a whole. Okay, the last one. Considering this kind of traditionalist, do you think that we still, at least the community or someone else can still get uh, another kind of intellectual property protection related to the use of the traditional knowledge? Um, I believe this will be the most suitable and no other intellectual property rights that we could recommend as either looking a specific rights to a specific person or a specific uh, legal entity and not towards the communal community itself. Yeah, what I mean is that even though yeah, you, you are protecting that kind of the, uh, knowledge with the DK, however, you still have like the kind of uh, community to get um, more benefit from using the traditional knowledge and also get another kind of IP protection. You still can acquire for the pattern yeah, by using the traditional knowledge as a part of the process or a part of the, the, was it the substance that can be used to get another benefit to them. Maybe that, that, uh, that the other thing that we can consider also to get more benefit from this, from this traditional knowledge. Uh, thank you, madam. Well, I recognize there might be another type of intellectual property that could be granted <coughs> towards the uh, traditional itself, but due to the of substance of a substance to a pattern or so on and so forth, I believe that there it would not be able to carry the utilization and the agriculture enhancement of it. As at the end, they will work with third party and the separation of benefit will not be longer in their control, but instead be the developer of such uh, So I believe the best choice for protection on this will be the communal intellectual property as it will be on communally and the benefit will be given back to us and not to a third party that utilizes it. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for uh, the questions you were any. Now we will continue for the next judges. Um, we have you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Winfrey. Uh, good morning, Lita. So I have two short questions. First is, uh, in this paper, I understand the concept, but I uh, don't get like the concrete example. For example, you say that uh, you want uh, people to, buy, to build a climate resilience technique puzzle, but uh, can you give an example? How, if, how, case of local knowledge that you use to build climate resilience at the country, and doing research about it, yeah? That's the first question. Second question is, uh, as you know, that Indonesia is a very big, uh, they have a lot of different areas and soil. Of course, each land has different soil conditions and climate conditions. So sometimes we can apply one cases or one knowledge to uh, other areas. So how is your you going to solve that problem to make sure that each knowledge can be applied for those who need it? Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Ibu. I would like to answer first the first question with about the concrete examples of implementation. So for the concrete, uh, concrete example of implementation, for instance, we take the traditional knowledge from the people of the village of Jepa, which implement some Niti Musang, that Niti Musang, that, um, so that you could determine what activities that could be done. And through 
the research and data collection uh, phases, but we noticed that there is other places that encounter similar problem or with to be noting that they should have a similar condition to the knowledge, then we could implement this traditional knowledge as a solution towards them. So it's a more cross-cultural solution. While also here, after they would like to give us the traditional knowledge that was set, considering that they have been more prepared, then we could then further technologies or other way of benefit. So it would like to be the and give the benefit would be back towards them. And for the second question, I noticed it so much that <coughs> Indonesia have a lot of areas and very diverse culture. But instead of seeing it in that way, how would you bring uh, Ibu here to see it as um, well, as a more strong impact towards the, this program. With a more diverse um, knowledge, many times there is a more variety of traditional knowledge that is possessed to encounter their own soul condition or their own climate condition. And nonetheless, of course, while it is really diverse, there will be also some places that share the same condition. Well, maybe they don't have the same knowledge or the same solution <coughs> as why other people have. And that's why I to implement it not one culture for all, but the most suitable culture for the suitable places. And that's why the preparation phases will take a very major um, role as it will map out the current condition of each places and the most suitable traditional notice after we gather the data. I hope that answer. Maybe I have a little bit more question. So uh, seems like there are a lot of work here. <coughs> so uh, from your suggestion, who from the government then should be involved uh, during the implementation of this project? I would like to point to main ministry that should work together on this, which is the Ministry of, Human, uh, of Law and Human Rights <coughs> for the protection of traditional knowledges, but also working together with Ministry of Agriculture. Nonetheless, the Ministry of Agriculture will hold the minister and will be the main initiator as all of our target is to build a climate resilient agriculture while utilizing the existing knowledge that already possess it. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ibu. Okay, thank you, Ibu. For since we are uh, only have two judges, uh, do judges still have any other questions? Or did that? No. If there is no other questions, then this will be the end of the uh, for Akita, we will have a big applause. Thank you so much for the presentation. Now, for the second presenter, uh, you may really help me with the thing. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Kiafa, okay. Kiafa, you may. Um, yeah, Kiafa, just like the first presenter, you will have 30 minutes for the presentation. Yeah. 
We will want uh, 30 minutes for the question and answer. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, I am ready. You may start your presentation. You look at a potato and see mesh potato, baked potato, french fries, potato salad, hash browns at McDonald's, roasted potato, or even potato stew. Now, you look at a homeless person. And you look just a homeless person. Good morning, everyone, our honorable judges, my fellow most outstanding students of Faculty of Law, Universitas Indonesia. I am Gia Fazirani and in this exciting occasion, I will come here to talk about one of the world's most important the forgotten market, minimizing economic inequality through panhandlers and homeless people empowerment program, Change Network. Ladies and gentlemen, economic inequality is a big challenge that we have to tackle in order to achieve sustainable goals. Basically, product or GDP has quadrupled since the 1990s. However, in 2021, Indonesia still had more than 26 million poor people, or almost 10% of the total population. Indonesia's economic growth is enjoyed merely by the 20% of the wealthiest population, whereas the recession hits the poor population the greatest. This positive correlation, this positive correlation between economic growth and inequality is this positive correlation between economic growth and equality is shown by the data where the three provinces with the real the regional GDP, the highest number of regional GDP, they also have the highest number of the most people and also panhandlers. Uh, it's shown in Jakarta, East Java, and also West Java. And also, to achieve a sustainable development, there is one problem we need to answer. How can we just economic inequality by saving the bad and population in the poverty line. Because Ned's curve theory in economic inequality theory, it explains that the positive correlation between economic growth and economic inequality, especially in the developing countries or in the emerging economy. The second theory is the feminism theory that explains that economic inequality is the determinant factor when someone commits a crime or any other defiant action. And lastly, the theory is regarding corporate social responsibility, which explains that CSR gives a company more benefit, whether in the means of profit or politics, public image, even ethical focus. Now, let's swim deeper into our problem. The homeless and panhandlers themselves are actually a group that are able to overcome the lack of resources in their environment proactively. Nonetheless, society labels them as lazy, unmotivated, undisciplined, or even worse, deserve their punishment. Little do we know that 80% of the homeless people don't actually like being homeless. And more than 82% of them actually want a stable and safe job. There are two non-ideal situations that is experienced by the homeless and panhandlers. The first in the realm of legal reality. The homeless and panhandlers are still criminalized even more to only survive in the world. Article 504 of Indonesia Criminal Code and numerous local government regulations give a penalty varied from one to six months of paper summon and also uh, one million rupees to 50 million rupees of life. In practice, reality, aside from the criminalization, 
The government has made numerous programs to help the homeless and panhandlers. The Ministry of Social Affairs initiated a program called Desaku Menanti, which gives the homeless and panhandlers 40 to 50 housing units. Whereas the local government mostly does treating and sending panhandlers or homeless back to their homes. Some CSR programs can also address these issues, but companies only give a for basic needs donation. These policies fail to empower homeless and uh, panhandlers because they isolate them from the dominant society or from the dominant culture. They do not give the panhandlers and homeless, the homeless more meaningful goals. They degrade their self-conception and do not have a sustainable funding or even profit. Now, the homeless and fan the homeless and panhandlers might need our spare chair. But do you know what do they need the most? A change. Change handlers or change for panhandlers is a program for integrative programs for panhandlers and the homeless by first opening new market for the poor population and second leadership and leadership and entrepreneurship training. The Chandlers is a community consisting of the homeless and the panhandlers who volunteer as an intermediary between partner company and poor community as a customer. The Chandlers opens the market for the poor by opening a franchise, licensed store, even being a distributor or an agent. The products can vary from basic needs like food, bread, or sanitation and health products, beauty and fashion, fashion or entertainment like furniture and coffee shops. The Chandlers collaborates with the social entrepreneurs who will social entrepreneurs who will manage investment and funding from impact investor or corporate social responsibility program. Using the funds coming from them, partner community produces goods and services with lower prices for the poor community. Most importantly, the change handling community will receive business training from social entrepreneurs or even the CSR and impact investor company. Change handlers apply a modern solution to make essential products accessible to everyone called the collaborative economy or handicap economy. The collaborative economy or collaborative consumption is an economic model where consumers use new technology to provide, buy, sell, share, or rent goods and services. Well, this uh, scheme is using technology. Change handlers use the panhandlers and the homeless as a community. The same scheme has been applied since the early 1990s when entertainment businesses like theaters and restaurants were less than plentiful, plentiful in the US for poor African American neighborhoods. The Macy Johnson Foundation helped to fund most in entertainment from theaters in rural areas. For the time, they became the chain's most profitable venues and gained network up to 500 million US. In recent case, Starbucks applied a new program. In 2015, Starbucks started to open a remodel 85 stores in rural and urban communities across the US. Each store must hire local staff from the poor communities. Starbucks partnered with loyal unite with local United Way chapters to develop job training and mentorship. This program set Starbucks after two unarmed black men who were shot by the police in Starbucks in Missouri. And with this program, Starbucks had created more than 300 jobs. Other than those companies, Unilever, also Proper and Temple, also sell their products to be more accessible to the poor community. Standards is different from any programs. Uh, from any of the previous programs, because we use the 3D principle. First, purpose. 
others in the community a bigger problem than just being rich or stop being homeless, stop being panhandlers. We encourage the poor panhandlers community to serve their, their poor community by opening new markets and also opening uh, new markets for the poor. Second, in change handlers, we focus on the people. We train them to become independent and to create sustainable profit and sustainable life for themselves. And lastly, change handlers is a business-based solution. It means that we don't rely on funding from government. We make collaborations with CSR programs that we can invest on to create reciprocal benefits. So there are two ways for the these uh, goals. First is collaboration with social partner, and second is investment from impact investor. There are four stages in building exchange handlers. The first is ideation, second is forming, third is funding, and the last but not least is measuring. Also, there are many stakeholders, including the uh, initiator company, impact investor, partner company, and government mentor. And the last, uh, the homeless and also family. This is also a smart solution because we have a specific target. We also have the measuring, uh, the measuring, uh, in, the measuring. Uh, we have the way to measure the social cost and also the social impact of this program. This is acceptable both for business and also for the panhandlers and homeless community. Uh, and this is also realistic because we give training to the panhandlers community and also the homeless community. And lastly, it is time bound but, uh, because this target, this goal is targeted to be done by 2023. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, economic inequality is a challenge for Indonesia as a developing country with an emerging economy. And to solve this issue, Indonesia must target the most disadvantaged population. Change handler is a, so, so, is a solution that will solve the root cause of the issues. Now, if you look at food and all we see is potential, why don't somebody look at human being and see them as potential? I always wondered why somebody didn't know something about them. Then I realized I am somebody we are somebody, and we can do something to change. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Kiefer, for your presentation. Now we will uh, start the uh, judges from Ibiza first. We will have 30 minutes for the question. Uh, thank you, very good. Good morning, Kiefer. So uh, this is actually a really interesting idea. Uh, I agree that CSR should be for sustainability. So it's not just one time project and it is end that way. Uh, currently I'm also working project uh, with CSR. So I see that um, there are several problems actually in CSR that I, I need you to answer and try to address uh, this problem. First is actually CSR is not obligation for a company, right? So uh, even in my research project, we see that not all of the company uh, give their back even though they are exploit uh, the, let's say, the mining and the, the sorry, the society and so on, but some of them not doing the CSR because it is not obligation for them. So how we can uh, solve the problem? How to make the company wants to do that CSR? And second is, my second question is, even though the company wants to do CSR, usually what they do is uh, something that impacted the society around them. So let's say they have a factory, and this factory impacted the society, and they give back only to the society that impacted by them. So how is that can address the society like in another area, not close to them? Let's say the vehicles and the homeless people, usually they are in city. 
And in city, we know that there are not a lot of factory or mining. So, like, what is it uh, for the company? Uh, how you can persuade the company to give uh, that kind of process? What is it for them? Okay, thank you, Lina. Thank you very much. Those are very interesting questions. Uh, so the first question is about, or the first problem is about the CSR is not mandatory for companies in Indonesia. It's only mandatory for BUMN. Uh, so how about the uh, other companies? So first, uh, we need to know that mostly big companies in Indonesia, uh, they are interested to have a CSR program because first, it is deductible to their taxes. So when they do CSR, they will have lower taxes and they will have more benefits because more people will trust the brand or the company. So uh, even though it is not uh, giving them profit straight, uh, straight profit, but it will give them uh, not not a straight line profit, uh, let's say by taxes or by uh, public image uh, and the like, and then. Uh, the second problem is about company will only give CSR to society around them. So in this change handler's uh, solution, we need to assess the company first. Yes, uh, I agree that many companies in Indonesia will only repair what they broke. But there are also many companies that is uh, interested to provide solutions for uh, bigger problems. Let's say one of the CSR programs, successful CSR program is Kampung Berseri Asa. Uh, that is CSR program. And it is, uh, it, it's been established in more than seven, uh, 17,000 cities, uh, 17,000 village, villages, I'm sorry. And it is very successful because they, uh, they give training to people in villages, in urban area, so that they have uh, their own products, uh, like batik, or, or probably uh, like uh, other products like foods, and they export them to Australia. So we can target, uh, the best solution is not solution to target everyone, but target the right ones. So this uh, change handler solution will target the right company uh, let's say Astra, or even uh, the one that also has similar problems is BTPN Shariah. BTPN Shariah also gives uh, training, uh, uh, entrepreneurship training, also financial leadership training to their uh, clients. So I think by having the right uh, partner, we will, uh, we will solve these issues together. Thank you, Jia. Okay, thank you. A very interesting uh, program. Yeah, I just heard about this. So, you are inspired with those programs already uh, conducted in the US. Okay, but however, you have to also consider that right, there might be a different uh, was it culture between the US and Indonesia. Yeah, like you have mentioned before, government have uh, and also the society also have conducted several programs. Yeah, but the reality turns out that they prefer not to be uh, not to be self-developed okay because you know yeah, you, you can for them maybe it's easier to get money by doing what uh, your parents are homeless they are homeless or parentless only in the big city however they are rich in their their own uh, their own uh, company, yeah. Okay, so you need to differentiate those target, uh, the target community. So how how would your uh, proposal 
considering those are yeah okay that's the first question okay i'll, I'll answer that question thank you uh, Mela. uh there is one big difference between change handlers and the previous programs this difference is the mandatory or voluntary of the program. Previous programs, uh, let's say it's from the government or even from the SR company, uh, they always give a mandatory program for the homeless and also the families. So they give foods or donations, even though someone might even need or don't want the donations. The company or even government, they build the houses, but they don't. Uh, they don't assess first the uh, panhandlers and also the homeless whether they want to have a house in the location that the government uh, decided to build in that location. In change handlers, this program is one hundred percent voluntary. So by having this one hundred percent voluntary. We will only have the high motivated and also the committed uh, panhandlers and the homeless, so that the program will run more smoothly than the previous program. And there is one uh, question following up to that, or there there is one more problem. If this is voluntary, then how we will attract uh, the homeless and the panhandlers to do this? Because it is not mandatory. So to attract panhandlers and also the homeless. Uh, we will use the inspiration. So, uh, because from the social measurement, there are people who reach the level utama. Utama uh, is level for the people, for the homeless, for the panhandlers who have uh, increased their uh, income by more than 50%, and also they have recruited more than 10 people on their businesses. So by having that, more people will be ins uh, inspired. Uh, more, more people will be an inspirer, and more people, more people will want to join the community. So uh, aside, aside, besides that, this will eliminate the unmotivated or the uh, unmotivated and uncommitted members or uh, maybe the homeless. This will only be, uh, attract the, the committed one and also the unmotivated one. Okay, for the first year, yeah, what is, uh, can you uh, <coughs> show or can you explain what is the, the number the target, the, yeah, the target number for this problem? So the target number for change handlers community is uh, 25 to 150 people. Why this is such a big range? Because uh, from why I have researched in CSR programs, they will usually uh, recruit like 150 people to 200 people to give them the empowerment that they needed. But also because this is uh, because this is a new program, so I give uh, I give a consideration that maybe we, we need to start small, so 25 is okay. At least there are 25 uh, people, uh, the homeless and the veterans, who are held by this program. Okay. Uh, one thing that surprised me is actually this uh, program yeah, will um, help people yeah, to develop new business. Okay. So, the problem is how because they don't have the capital, uh, they don't have the was it the skill, and they don't even have was it the vision and become a new business. Okay, so how would you uh, was it, uh, the concrete programs to to realize or efforts to make this? Uh, Okay, uh, so there are three concerns. The first is capital, second is skill, and the third is vision. Uh, I will address the last one first. So a lot of us think that panhandlers and the homeless, they don't have any vision, they are basically their most motivated and undisciplined. But uh, according to 
the research partners and the companies, they do have a share. They do want to be, uh, they do want to contribute to the society. And they think that being a partner is a contribution to the society. Why? Because they think that if they receive uh, funding or they receive a donation from the government, they become a burden to society. So they think, I need to have money by myself. I need to get money by my own uh, action, my own uh, my own effort. So they think. So this is a wrong stigma about the panhandlers and also the owners that they don't have vision. Uh, the research shows that they want to contribute to their community, especially their uh, community for people. So uh, in this change and their community, we will treat them vision bigger more than just being rich or more than just just stop being panhandlers, just stop being homeless. No, we want them to contribute to the poor community also to build the poor community so that they will stay in the program uh, even after they reach, even after they stop being homeless or stop being uh, the panhandlers. And then the second one is skills. So in the in the realistic aspect, realistic uh, measurement, we will get training by mentor and also investment by impact investor. So this is also related to the capital concern. So the first about skill. The social entrepreneur, the social entrepreneur, this usually will help company build their CSR programs. Social entrepreneur will usually give trainings to uh, the community, the bananas or the homeless. That's for the training. So after three months, uh, at least after three months, the panhandlers and also the uh, homeless people, they will have the basic skill to run a not just uh, not a business, but maybe become a barista, maybe become a, a, a accountant in a little business, a small business. I'm sorry. And then about the capital, we we have company CSR program. Uh, one company says our program usually be funding uh, around 200 million in only one program. Only one program. So that is a lot of funding uh, for uh, so little people if we have to use the 25, uh, the 25 uh, measurement. And then we also have a partnership company that will also help to give uh, the products like uh, bread, probably or other food sanitation, health, and, uh, etc. And then we also have impact investor. Impact investor will invest to uh, whether the partnership company or to the social entrepreneur to give more funding for the, the homeless or the parents or even the partners itself. So that will all answer the three concerns from uh, you, capital, skills, and also Okay, the last question regarding this uh, skill of programming. Is it your own? Uh, I just wonder whether it is of your own or union ideas, or you uh, you get this from other programs, previous programs? Yes, for the change handlers itself, it is my own idea. And in Indonesia, after I uh, for a really long time, there is nothing like this program ever. But I identified this program from the other previous programs, uh, especially in the US, like Starbucks and also uh, Lois and uh, Lois Cineplex Entertainment. Uh, that is the two major. And previously, I also worked in social entrepreneur companies, so I worked in CSR programs. And I think why CSR programs? So only, uh, like, like Ms. Uh, Ifa stated before, only repair what we already broke. Why don't we solve bigger problems like poverty uh, or even inequality so that we can have a sustainable development uh, reach uh, by the end of uh, 2030. So this is my uh, change handlers itself is my uh, original uh, solution, but I also it, uh, inspired, I'm also inspired by other programs and then other So, which, which part is your uh, notification? 
my modification is this part, the honeycomb economy, and then the community, the change handler community, the voluntary part, uh, how we will recruit uh, panhandlers and homeless, and then uh, they will have a franchise or entity, or they become agent or contributor. And then uh, about their partnership uh, company, like foods, uh, etc., and uh, CSR programs. Because in the US, it's uh, not from the CSR programs, it's from the impact investor. But impact investor in Indonesia is not uh, yet. Uh, as well as as well as established as well as in the US, so uh, I I give uh, an alternative from the CSR programs. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, because there is no question, at this point, we have your presentation. Yeah, but we will close to the end. Thank you very much. Uh, our okay. So, we have about a minute to go back to you. Please, uh, I'll be reading that. So we already have the next contestant, Muhammad Sardi. Please prepare uh, your presentation. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, swastiastu, nama budaya, greeting to all of us. Dear other judges, and all of the related stakeholder, both online and offline. My name is Muhammad Wardah Sarawak Gutuka, a student of Fakulti Lakau University of Indonesia, Pus Pakutan Sianti. Which today I'm going to present my creative idea in MIMPI, which is an abbreviation of Pemanfaatan Air dan Matahari Tanpa Henti in Nusa Tenggara Timur, specifically in Suba Island. The reason background that I choose this topic is due to my personal experience. I used to live, grow, and adapt in an East Coast regional city in East Java, which is in Surabaya. And then uh, I realized that there are many beneficial things that can be gathered from the water from and from the solar energy that can be utilized to fix several problems, such as the uh, drought phenomenon that happens <coughs> annually or even has become a uh, non stop issue in Nusa Tenggara Timur, especially in Pulau Sumba. To start the presentation, I would like to present some of the data that I gathered from both uh, primary and secondary uh, source. First is 29.67% is the poverty rate in the Southern Gratimo, especially in Sumba Island, making that one out of three people in Sumba Island we are going to really families are considered in a poverty, in a poverty living. And this is proven by the 
Presidential, Presidential Regulation Number 63 Year 2020 on the settlement of this program, this program area in, in Indonesia, which also involves the Sumba Island as the presidency. This social issue does not involve to solve the uh, more complex social issue, but also happens in a result to the natural phenomenon that I'm going to uh, elaborate after this. First, is the true phenomenon in Indonesia and the Timur, especially in Pulau Sumba, happens due to the climate facts that 205 days in NDT is considered as torrid weather. Its temperature is even also raises up to for, for uh, roughly 40 degrees Celsius in a day, meaning that uh, this results to the drug situation in NDT and it is even become more complex because 97.5% of the terrain in NDT is comprised of calcareous land or uh, tanah apur. So mostly the terrain has no any nutrients for the people to, uh, to make and produce agricultural products. And more complex is NDT and Pulau uh, Sumba specifically is the highest area in Indonesia to receive and for inhabitants to live. The answer is probably uh, slightly yes, but it is actually has hidden term, <coughs> hidden term of potential that we can utilize using the solar power, energy, and water that I had mentioned before. Why? Because if we can see, the Sumba Island has actually the area that covers land of 34,000 km square, but the ocean itself has six times area larger than its island. It's covered only to 200,000 km square. And due to the, due to the uh, sun irradiation that I have mentioned before, Suba Island has a bright feature to be the biggest solar power plant or bright feature as SPV in Indonesia and even the President Jokowi and the NKT uh, governor are going to produce the biggest SPV in Indonesia making the, this island is uh, to be the bright uh, Dream of Indonesian future re renewable energy uh, plan. From this being said, I can convince everybody in this open forum that an abundant water resources when uh, when we combine it with the eternal solar irradiance, we can produce a solar powered sanitation mechanism that can transform the salt water into a fresh water that can be consumable for such inhabitants several inquiries of attitude uh, to wash their clothes, to wash their uh, silverware, and even to be a consumable fresh water to drink. And this program can be done in three methods, which are distillation, separation, and desalination. Uh, and my friends, that desalination is the most effective, efficient, and economical product, uh, method to, for us to all. And I realized that I have attached too much uh, technique Tech, uh, technical procedure in my paper, but to summarize all of the earlier process, so my idea is we are going to build a floating uh, SPP in the offshore area to generate the uh, device that transform the fresh water, uh, salt water into the fresh water, which we call uh, 
uh, the saltwater reserve osmosis or abbreviated as SWLO, as we SWLO, and then it will filtrate all of the mineral uh, compressed in the water, and then we are going to <coughs> simply yeah, we are uh, just simply we can uh, distribute the water into uh, by the pipe until it can be consumed by the inhabitants in the uh, Sumba Island. And I, as a law student, I believe that there are several questions regarding this project, such as whether this project is make sense, whether this project is manageable, whether this project is uh, or sort of can be accepted by the local inhabitants. And the answer is actually, yeah, I cannot currently or until 100% is going to be uh, implemented. Uh, because I haven't wait, I haven't uh, started the program, uh, of course. But if we see the precedent, there are has been several uh, projects similar to this, which has been successfully conducted in the capital of the NDB, and some of the research that I have done to through my. Uh, Relative in faculty of engineering, faculty and faculty of social uh, public health in our university and other university in Indonesia. And by doing this project, I can envision that we are going to uh, we are going to achieve the SDG number number thirteen, which is the climate action. Why? Because as we be our solar power uh, plant, we can exchange the diesel power plant that uh, currently is, going, is being uh, utilized in NDT, which of course is not a uh, renewable energy. And we are going to create a clean energy as we can utilize the water and the solar energy with an abundant and eternal amount. As the result of this combination, we can go, we, we are going to produce a sanitation, clean water and sanitation that has become the nightmare in Sumba Island and some other region in this particular country. I believe that this project will not only involve us as a law student, as this project requires uh, multidisciplinary uh, techniques, I am going to uh, going to invite several multidisciplinary stakeholders, such as uh, for the contract itself. We are going to invite this uh, the collaboration of students, which are start, uh, uh, whom are studying the uh, engineering. And for the sanitation itself, we are going to collaborate with uh, students from the medical studies and public uh, health studies. And for the socialization itself, because we are going to empower the society that maybe have a different perspective with us as. Uh, uh, we are going to invite the. Let's say the neighboring faculties we are going to the uh, as the restoration of the society that I'm not going I'm not going to uh, endorse the as we as the actually, but to have the education that this water has been uh, qualified as the consumable water as regulated by uh, the Ministry of Health Regulation. <laughs> and as a law student, our involvement can be done in several uh, role, multidisciplinary uh, 
requirements such as regarding the environment, we are going to uh, process on the permission and or the approval of the permanent uh, LHA and then other SPPL requirement and then for the contract to arrange the structure of the uh, of the contract to to the external party which are going to enforce they are going to be the donator of this of this project and then for the uh, other related bureaucracy they are going to be going to take part in this role and then by having this project I can convince all of the judges and my fellows that I am really looking forward to this project uh, since of several years ago because I have experienced this such of uh, true situation when I am sitting Rusa and when I was I was visiting and at the end of the day, I hope this project can be beneficial to the related society and not just only inhabitants in Nusa Tenggara Timur, but also can be applicable to the, all other residents that have or uh, are facing the similar issue as this. I will have some balance. The first end of my presentation, and I'm really looking forward for the critics, comment, and other uh, judges, particularly my presentation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Sakit Sakti Om. And I'm going to give a little bit to the Mr. Okay, thank you very much, Kalapati, for the presentation. Now we're going to start with that. Question and answer session with the judges. We have now three judges, so the time will be longer. We will, we will have a 10 minute uh, of question and answer session with the judges, uh, starting from now. Maybe one of the judges will ask a question first. Maybe. Okay. I really like the way you structure the problem and uh, Propose a solution. I have. <coughs> it has been conducted successfully in Kupang, in officer of the Kupang uh, 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 And presently, as my research uh, I have went through, the society uh, the in Kupang has utilized this uh, as the water to to for them to drink as a fresh as a fresh water as uh, as uh, they get it from the dispenser located near of the offshore, which uh, distributed through the pipe that uh, can be gathered from the temporary pond nearby of the offshore. And uh, in regarding to the other region in Indonesia, I believe. I believe that it has been transferred to that when I'm visiting the uh, northern area of Pantura, I, I see there has been conducted successfully in the area of Remba, which is uh, central Java. And, but however, my idea that we uh, are not only here is that I am going to utilize the abundant power of the uh, solar energy to generate such of the SPLO kit. But uh, 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 all in all, it has been actually in several regions and can be and has been utilized by the local intelligence. Okay, so I think just a couple of issues there. Um, a follow up question first. The project in Kupang, who is in charge of the project? And is there, are there any issues with the use of desalinated water in Kupang County? Okay, thank you, Mr. Lodi, for the second question. As for the <coughs> first project that is uh, happened, that is currently happening in Kupang, uh, 
one, the stakeholder involved here is actually the external party, uh, which is the manager of the of the of the project itself. Uh, which the director has actually donated some of the fresh water uh, uh, in the form of the uh, land and fresh water to this community. But in accordance with the research that I have done, they managed to change the scam of the donation because uh, annually they used to uh, donate some 10,000 liters of water. It cost 50 million of money, and this project has actually uh, spent around 60 million thousand that I have uh, attached on the paper, which is actually not a uh, cheap project actually, but it that, but it means the escalation price is only 20 percent. Uh, and the 20% expression price, the margin price, can be utilized for long-term usage. At this 10 years, because the, the agents have been guaranteed 10 years of product. So, we yeah, are uh, going back to the question that the related project in from external party, which is the nature, and uh, this is going to be the best part that I'm going to bring on this project. There is actually three other projects. The first one for desalination, sponsored by Bang Mandiri. And Bang Mandiri uh, established, I think, around two or three desalination centers for fishermen villages in around the That's the first one. The second one, the it, the <coughs> Ministry for Public Works has donated, I think, two or three desalination systems to be used throughout MPT. So I think that, that should have been used as a Especially on the, there is no, there is no issue of water needs in MPT. <coughs> the issue of water needs in MPT <coughs> and the deficit that we put in from this evaluation process and evaluation process. The Thousand Islands uh, region in Jakarta, north of Jakarta, since 2009, they already have four desalination plants. So I think that could have been a good comparison for you to not only evaluate what happened and what could be uh, improved, but also on the issue of the power usage. And what, how many, how many watt of electricity does it require to power all these projects? And my second question: solar power. And you say this is the novelty of the research. The main issue with solar power in Indonesia is air pollution. Generation of effective solar power essentially has two issues. The first one is air pollution. And the second one is storage of surplus energy uh, derived from that solar power. We'll not go to the second issue, but we'll go to the first one. Have you identified issues of air pollution in MTT and whether or not it will play an effect in generating the power from solar energy? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Loki, for the third question. And uh, as we can see, Actually, the solar power plant has benefits, but also has progress. And according to my research, even air pollution, I believe that its amount of the uh, pollution has more. Uh, small number. No, no, no. That's that's going to be my last question. My question is, I'll make it very, I'll make it clear. If we want to generate electricity for solar power, the basic rule of thumb is the particulate matter of the air should be less than two point five. That's that's the, that's 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 what I I have read. 
So the issue with solar power in Indonesia in general is that we have too much air pollution. For a solar photovoltaic cell to be effective, absorb solar, transform into energy, there needs to be a clear air. The clear air is defined by less than 2.5 particulate matter. Now, have you identified this as an issue? In solar product, in solar energy production in NTT, what is the level of air pollution in NTT, and whether it has an effect on how solar power uh, or how the sun, or how solar will generate electricity in NTT, uh, follow this project. Okay, thank you for the for the question. I just for the and the better for the question. Uh, in accordance with the air pollution level that has been mentioned before, I admit that I have to admit I have not been very sure about the pollution level in the SK. 2.75 and it's going to be very difficult to generate electricity from solar and energy. Okay, I think to looking for the uh, for the question, but uh, in, in, in accordance with the uh, fact in NTT, I, I believe that in Sumba itself, the, as I have done a research before, the clean area in uh, Sumba Island has actually not that necessary, so I can see, I can envision that this our plan is when it makes sense to be placed and I from the geography itself I can see from this uh, map the island of Suba has also a rural area that we can set the solar power plant nearby the area that has a clear, uh, clear air pollution level, which are uh, located in the certain area of the Sumbai, making it still make sense for the solar power plant to be placed because inside of the rural area, the air pollution that it will be the reason I have done has up so much bit compared to the of the nearby port, port area. So my last question is: Is there is there waste from desalination plants? And do you have a plan in your research how the waste is going to be treated to ensure that the waste is not going to harm? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the question, uh, Mr. Doki. So the waste. Uh, issue can I can call, I can say it as the most uh, related to this SDP because it is related to the uh, oil under the sea which can be uh, affected to uh, the creator as the fish as the sea bed and other but in accordance with my research the primary and data, including my uh, consultation with friends, uh, my relative from engineering faculty and uh, biomedical The SPP itself actually has not produced any harmful uh, material. It even has a benefit or a positive effect for the creature in or undersea or water biota. Why? Because the floating SVP can prevent flow of, of the uh, alga that the alga actually has been the karma uh, for the fish because it consumes the gas methane or the fish to absorb some, some of the oxygen. So, first the question uh, regarding the question uh, 
shall be clear to question. There are no any side effect of the selling engine uh, process. Although by doing the selling engine process, the drawback is we are losing the, uh, the mineral on the water, meaning the water has not uh, comprising any uh, nutrients such as the calcium of the water. But I think that I don't know any helpful effect at all. So I think that's a bit incorrect because from there are uh, that I think if my memory serves me correct, there is at least three methods of uh, salt water preservation. First one is reverse osmosis. The second one is a method which is essentially heating the salt water. I forgot the third one. But why reverse osmosis is very popular is because the ratio of production of clean water and the waste, which is called brine, brine is heavy salinated water. So this is the byproduct of desalination. The ratio is much more if we use reverse osmosis. That is why the number one method compared to how they desalinate a uh, pig in North Jakarta, they also use reverse osmosis because the ratio of clean water to waste is the most efficient. But there is still waste. The waste is called brine. Brine is a sludge uh, that is heavily salinated. Usually, the uh, Water treatment plants, they have to treat this brine for it to then be released to the ocean. So I think uh, in completing this, uh, this is a very good idea, uh, but you also need to think, because this is in the hopes of fulfilling SDGs, climate change climate action, you also need to think about the ways that desalination plants produce and the energy and effort needed to treat it so that it can be released back into the environment with uh, less, uh, with the least minimum of uh, So I think that is uh, all the questions. Thank you very much for the topic for the new knowledge that I have got. Thank you very much for that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I see that this is a point of misuse for you to look at because it needs to expensive technology in solar panel and stealing tools. Uh, but I see that maybe it will be feasible because uh, there are other examples with uh, other areas. My other sorry, uh, my question is uh, who are the parties in this project? And since the idea come from the higher education institution, from you, uh, how do you see the higher education roles to uh, contribute in this project? What can we do to uh, make this project visible? Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Park, for the question. As I have also admitted, this project requires uh, not a cheap number of amount of money. But I believe this project is uh, feasible and makes sense because uh, if, we, if we see at glance, it, it, it requires uh, 60 million of money. But uh, in terms of the uh, comparison, it actually but it is the price compared to the annual fresh water production. And regarding to the question itself, we are doing to empower and require involvement from the multidisciplinary uh, undergraduate uh, students. And it is a contrast with our <coughs> discipline, uh, it's uh, our discipline uh, study that we are going to take a role of this part. As we have in the creative uh, article, it's Part into the different and vary department, such as as the law student, we can take part uh, into uh, 
to making such of set up a contract and for the medical student they can ensure that they can collaborate with such of the external party which is the donator of this project to uh, ensure the quality control has been passed to ensure that the water is uh, proper to the customer and for the engineering student they can collaborate with the external party this external party uh, and their special research team to construct this project and uh, for the psychology student they can involved in the socialization to the society, to the inhabitants, to ensure that this program uh, is secure and is agent to be contributed to the inhabitants. That is not from me. Okay, so um, my question will be what is the biggest or challenges that you may face in implementing these ideas? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Eddie, for the question. Actually, the problem itself can be uh, separated into, into two big uh, separations, which is the technical procedure and then the social, uh, the social uh, issue of the society. First, the technical procedure, it is actually the problem that we are going to build a uh, source of the project in the nearby city which has the big population density which is uh, in the capital of the Sumatra, which are the Waipainapu. And the drawback is by constructing this project uh, near offshore of the Waipainapu, uh, we are encountering the problem uh, regarding to, to the air pollution that we have been by Mr. That's uh, from all the uh, and, uh, from the network problem. And then for the social problem, we are going to place a local inhabitants with a different and very perspective of uh, way of thinking compared to uh, mostly uh, us that live in the city. Even even us has not been familiarized with this this osmosis for some people they have the trust issue in consuming the uh as the bully at home. But the, but in accordance with the uh local safety, that's why the obstacle is how we can persuade, how we can convince <coughs> that we are going to and endorse us of the advertisement. But how can we ensure that this uh, water is consumable for the inhabitants? Because they are the uh, main objective of us that if they are not, uh, if, they are, if they have no any reliance on us, then the water is, uh, then they are not going to use this SWRO device so that this project is going to be useless because they are not going to use the potential of the salt water into the fresh water that is consumable and efficient in accordance with the <coughs> Ministry of Health and Education. That's all of me. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, I have been to Sumba Island in Kumai Mahu uh, in a person with my uh, journey with my death. Oh, what about it? I believe it was my secret of my adaptation. Quite a 
So I believe this is actually not an easy to do a project since it has uh, so many obstacles that I have mentioned before. And then my backup plan is if some of the project requires a smaller amount of money uh, that fund that we can get the fund we can get the. <coughs> I believe we still can. I I believe we still can still produce the next available device, but we can use other uh, source to generate the uh, device. We can use the current uh, power plant as a temporary. After uh, while we are waiting for the future. Because SPP uh, going to be finished uh, and then because in the first twenty five, the biggest SPP Indonesia will be successfully constructed uh, in the day. So that if the money is comes to the fund, then we can better we can reduce the cost in uh, using the solar power plant. But the SPM has the oh, project still uh, went through. Uh, this, this is my uh, first uh, plan, and then the second backup plan is if we encounter in the issue of the air pollution, we can uh, move the uh, direct the site location into the area of uh, air pollution to ensure that there is no harmful effect going to be Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Next, maybe Rafi, uh, questions or check, check. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, okay. thank you for me for the presentation. Uh, maybe I just have uh, one question for this uh, because the questions have, have been asked earlier so my question is have you conducted in that research and analysis on how will the native inhabitant uh, react on this new technology uh, installment and if you did uh, how will it be <laughs> it actually has been uh, um, Interesting issue because we are dealing with because we are dealing with of the local communities that mostly in, in, in Eastern of Indonesian part I believe the local community has such as their tanah uh, ulayat or not when we can uh, describe it as tanah ulayat because they be used to uh, efficient deaths some of the water area is belongs to some of the community uh, the, uh, the water area in A belongs to community A uh, water area B belongs to community B and so on but however in accordance with my uh, research in accordance to the customary law aspect I believe that the area of Wainapu has been uh, quite clear from this uh, sort of the issue because it has been metropolized into a uh, port city that our now uh, our current development is now in accordance with the bureaucracy uh, under the term LHK provision and regulation. So in accordance with the customer legal aspect, I believe uh, it actually faces certain problem when it comes to the rural area, but in terms of some, some of the area that has been moder modernized, uh, the, some of this issue has been solved, as proven by this area has been become uh, metropolitan and become the capital city of the East Civil. That's all for me, I'm a British for when I default. Okay, thank you for reading, that's all for me. 
No, uh, the couple of questions. Judges. Okay. Uh, if there is no other questions, then it will be the end of the presentation. We will give applause. Okay. okay. We will continue to the next contestant. Uh, Ibu Ani, we can be with the crowd. <coughs> Okay, next Fariza, you can prepare your presentation. For your presentation and 13 minutes uh, for the answer and question session. Are you ready? Okay, you may start your presentation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Sastian Slu, Sam Good morning, the other judges, and also my dearest friends, my dearest colleagues. Before I continue my presentation, I'd like to introduce myself, Class Coast International or KKI, and I'm from Bahia Maxim, South Africa. <laughs> Having experienced more than six years in doing social activities, community services, and also community development, make me realize that be aware of the existence of the problem is not enough. We have to be part of the solutions in order to solve the problem. And I'm here standing in front of all of you, presenting my creative idea as the effort of me being a part of the solutions. And my idea and my solutions that I propose is titled Berkarya Dalam Kestimewaan. A platform for optimizing paintings of persons with autism through commercialization of works to achieve social and economic independence. Having experienced more than three years living with people autism, people with autism made me realize that people with autism is a group of people that can be easily discriminated. Limitations to access to work. Limitation to access the educations, limitations to access the society is the proof that people with autism can be easily discriminated in the society. And I'm here today with this creative idea as the solution for that problem. As solutions, it is for sure that I have some problems identification for the creative idea and continue to the problem identification. First, having experience living with people with autism, we realize that society think and give a negative stigma to the people with autism as seen as a social and economic burden. Economic social burden because to the family or the parents that have this child uh, with autism, they will feel shame, they will feel, they will give up to, because of, uh, because of the son or the children having autism. And for society, the society cannot accept people with autism inside the society. They don't want to interact with them because they think because of the limitation of people with autism, that they 
cannot interact continually inside the society. And economic burden, because the therapy of people with autism will cost a very big amount of money. The second problem regarding it's also often difficult for people with autism to be accepted by society and work in place of work because sometimes the requirement for getting a job is good, good in communication skills. And we know that people with autism is bad at having problem with communication and also cognitive. So that requirement cannot be applied to the people with autism and people with autism can access the work. I believe that if that those problem is still existing and not being solved, it can make an inequality inside our society. That is why in my creative idea, I have this number 10, reducing inequality. And then, why did I choose paintings? of person with autism because based on my research I found at least three potential identifications regarding the painting. First, as you can see, the unique economic, unique economic potential of works in the field of painting from people with autism through the story and woe factor that are carried in each of its work. In my visit, I think last two weeks, uh, Yayasan Cinta Harapan Indonesia, YCHI Autism Center, the therapist and also the owner of the Yayasan, said that we, although the people with autism has some lack in communication and also cognitive, they will also have something big potential in other fields, such as they can paint, they can draw even better than the normal person. To be honest, as you can see in my um, lampiran in my creative uh, paper, it is the proof that uh, their drawing is good, even, to be honest, better than mine. And also, based on the research on sekolah dasar luar biasa di Kelamongan, it is stated that one of the characteristics of the painting works by people with autism is it is cannot be controlled or you cannot expect the result as you want because the imaginations of people with autism is very high and you can control it. So I believe that it's a low factor and if we combine it and we have we add added value to the paintings then there will be an economic uh, potential for the uh, painting works. And then the second one is the economic potential is external factor I also find the internal, the internal factor where the potential of painting activities for people with autism as a means for therapy. As I mentioned before, therapy for people with autism is expensive. And with this idea, with this program, I believe that besides they are having economic profits from it, they also can do the therapy, like physical, Motoric and also sensory and also communication therapy for when, when they paint the painting. And the last potential is to provide the two first potential. I believe that the potential of people with autism to achieve social and economic dependence so that this negative stigma where people with autism is, is uh, social and economic burden can be erased. My development goals for this idea challenge of people with autism in the field of painting through the commercialization of their works to achieve social and economic independence within two years. The, the, thing, the interesting thing is about the commercialization and also the time limit, which is, which is within two years. I will be explaining it about it uh, later in this speech. And then continuing. The, the important stages in Berkaria dalam istimewaan is painting, is painting digitalization. As I mentioned before, Berkaria dalam istimewaan is to achieve and provide a platform 
for optimizing the talents of people with autism. So we are here as a platform for people with autism to maximize their potential and to get economic gain for that. What will we do? First, we will help to digitalize the painting. So the painting is not only from the paper, but also we digitalize it. And the second message is we apply it on another, uh, other media, such as t-shirt, tote bags, hats, and also hoodies. So we can send an application on other media, we can and we can give added value to the works of people with autism. And then the last important statement in the career of Mr. Awad is independence preparation. As I mentioned before, the main target for this project, this creative idea, is to make the people with autism economical, economically and socially independent. So when the product, when the painting is made, when the product is produced and the product is being sold and marketed, that cycle is cycling, the cycle is running. The team of Berkaria Taiwan will teach the family, will teach the people with autism, will give the information, will train the family and the people with autism to be able to do it by themselves. We will say that it is very easy to conduct. It is only to, you just, you just need only to make the drawing, make the painting, digitalize it, or if they, they, they do not have the facilities, we will connect them to the one who can digitalize the paintings, and then after they digitalize the painting and they apply it on another other media, they produce it, we will connect them with the founder of digital printing, and we will uh, train them, we will advise them what how much will be what how much is the cost for the production cost and also we will ask them about the selling uh, selling price so in order they can become independent with this project and then um, general judges you can see examples of the paintings of people with autism in my in my in my or with our Beloved colleagues, with my beloved friends, wants to see you can scan and or or uh, type the link with the otherwise slash current list for an autism with caps lock. And then last thing, the next stages of the work plan. I said I I have mentioned and I have explained about the important stages that I will explain now about the main stages of the work plan. First, about Collaborations of internal staff, important partners and creators of works. Collaborations of internal staff means that we are preparing the team for Berkaria Pistimewan and also preparation for important partners such as parents of people with autism, institutions or organizations that is focusing on curing people with autism, such as, as I mentioned before, the other San Cinta Hati Indonesia, which has Autism Center. Uh, why? Because I believe that it is difficult for us to meet directly with the people with autism. I believe that with the help of those institutional, those organizations, we can see and we can find the right people with autism in order to join our program and also operation of creator of the works. And then the second stage is the process of making works and products. Productions, products, productions, like make the painting, produce the products, and also a quality check. And then the third stage is marketing and sales, where, where, where we will market the product in websites, in media, in social media, like Instagram, TikTok, and also online shop, like Shopee and Topic here. And also the distribution sales. The distributions of sales profit. As I mentioned in my paper, that the profits will be distributed 90% for the creator of the works, which is the people with autism, and 10% for us for the sake of for the sake of our needs, like um, doing the market and also the capital for producing the products. And also there is 
the last, as I mentioned before, the last stage is the dependent preparations as always, because our last and our main target is to make the people with autism to be independent socially and economically within two years. Why I choose two years? Because I believe this credit idea is very easy. It's very easy to be done and it's very simple to be done. Even though the problem is it is it's a bit big, but I believe with this simple, with this easy, easily conducted solutions, the problem will be solved. <coughs> and I think for the closing, I believe that I, the honorable judges, and also my dearest friends in here, have agreed, have agreed to one thing that everyone, without exceptions, have the same right, have the two of equal right to access works to optimize their potential based on their hobbies, based on their potential, and also based on their own capabilities. So let's make this great ideas works. Let's make this great ideas happen because I believe that people with autism have as big as as potential as big as the normal person, or even bigger, better, and also more unique. So, thank you. Akhirullah, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, uh, so you are trying to develop the this new platform, and there is a new platform available. I think as far as your own opinion, as far as I as far as I know, I can't find any uh, similar idea with it. So um, that's why I bring up this uh, this creative idea. Okay, so uh, it's Thank you for the question. So basically, what is my role? What is our team role role in this uh, idea? So we develop this platform. We we as a team to develop develop a platform where the people with autism can submit their uh, paintings works, and we can help them to digitalize it and commercialize it. And also, uh, just to make a profit, as I mentioned, 90% for the people with autism as creators uh, and 10% for our professionals. And I think uh, I agree with you that um, in Indonesia, in the world, uh, there are a lot of um, treatment for special children, especially for autistic uh, children, uh, connected or related with the artistic. But I found it. Uh, in a lot of squad that's luar biasa and also other uh, institutions that's focusing on autism, people with autism. But the novelty, I believe the novelty, novelty in my uh, credit idea is the commercialization and the digitalization of the paintings and applying it to other media. So basically, uh, 
there are treatments, but there, there are only treatments for them, for the people with autism and sign uh, of for the um, the differences with this idea, we try to help the commercialization, the digitalization of the benefits and the applications of the media in order to them to know and to realize that oh, we can make profit from this therapy, we can make profit from therapy. So, besides the people with autism having therapy and also having treatments. They also can get the uh, economic thing. And how would you get the money? Are the buyer or the one who wants to license it? I think that you're taking my question. I think your question is regarding the marketing, right? So I believe. Uh, um, I will treat this product as the color product in the studio, but uh, we will do it, we will market it in, uh, with social media and also in online shop. And as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, we will tell them that there is story and wow factor in, 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 in this product. And as I mentioned in my paper, every product, in each product, we will provide a QR code that can be scanned by the seller or by the um, seller so to be um, that they can send it and they can see and they can watch the video about the process for the process of the people with autism making, making the product. So we we want to uh, tell the seller or the seller so to be that this is the real work of the people with autism that have that you guys give the negative stigma and social, social and economic burden. They can do it, they can do it by themselves, and they will have the potential to become, not become social and economic burden for society. Well, that you do. Or their children to be how it's online. Yeah, I think it's it is it's it's more the yeah the more privacy uh, the more information you have it might increase the privacy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's an it issues. Um, that is why um, I think with these uh, stages the preparations of internal uh preparations of important partners so we will collaborate with the institutional or yayasan peduli autism autism center such as like something like that to connect us with the parents and we ask we will explain to them this is how it works this is this is how our idea is if you if you don't agree that's why another way that you can agree if they don't want to uh, have the video posted online, it's okay. <laughs> but uh, my main strategy is to provide the online, to provide the video in order to the seller to know the process and to appreciate the process of the uh, product making. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next for this, uh, in Bifa. Thank you. Good morning, for example. This is actually a good idea because uh, one of my new family members also children with special needs. <coughs> uh, I have some concern with uh, my HIV because I agree that sometimes their story are something that can touch them perspective. However, there will be issues. Uh, do you think what we do here are exploit their story? I mean, uh, of course, sometimes there are some statements uh, like family member don't want to you know that they have a special children in the family, right? I think uh, this is one of the issues that we need to address how to resolve it. And <coughs> another question is about sustaining, uh, sorry, uh, about the fixing uh, already 
I mean that uh, sometimes people wants to buy art uh, from the autism people it because maybe two reasons. First, because of the quality of the works, and second, maybe because of the altruism factors. And let's agree that uh, this is something that not predictable. I mean, you can predict where um, one works are, can be sold up or not. And I we see here that the funding solely come only from sold painting or sold merchandise, uh, which means maybe it's not predictable. Right? You can uh, get different income. Let's say that you want a whole to solve the sustainability issue. Okay, thank you, Weaver, for the uh, interesting uh, thoughts and also questions. For the first question regarding the exploitation and the stigma from the family. So, uh, to be honest, I got these very same questions yesterday when I was presenting in Bahasa. And uh, my answer will be the same. I believe exploitation is when we are gaining profits from it, while as I mentioned in my paper, it is 90% the profits will be distributed for the people with autism. So this team, our team, people with Brutal Galaxy and one not getting any profits. We only take 10% uh, from it. And it is for solely for the oppression of it. And also, I believe it's not also exploitation for the stopping people with autism because I think that it can be seen as exploitation of stories. Uh, we see it first, but the main target for, for us is to make one another main target for this project is to make the people, the society realize that people with autism is not a social and economic burden. That they can conduct, they can provide a beautiful works, beautiful artworks. So I believe it's not a solution, uh, it's not an exploitation of the story and for the stigma from the parents and family, um, I believe that I agree with you that some families, some parents doesn't know, uh, doesn't want the society to know that they have children with autism. And I, I experience, I experience it by myself. But once again, as I uh, as I mentioned before, with um, answering who had a question, that we will talk to parents, we will talk to family that. This is the main target, this is the target, so we can have clear and same interpretations with this project, with this creative idea. So, if they agree, then, uh, then we can continue, but if they, have, uh, they don't agree and they don't want to, as you mentioned, they don't want, to, they don't want the world to know that they have with, uh, people, but they, they have uh, children with autism that uh, we will not uh, collaborate because at, first, at the very basic uh, principle, they do not want to do this. And for the second question, for so sustainability, I think I agree with you that because the uh, capital, capital or the um, funding is totally based for community-based funding, like, such as um, open donations and other things. Uh, it is constant for sustainability here right? if we don't have enough money to continue. And what, what is my solution for the problem? I believe that uh, this thing is a social business where the interest in this project is very big, it's very high. So I believe <laughs> the possibility for we are lacking or we, are, uh, we don't have enough money is existing. But I think the possibility for donation uh, or collaborations with uh, governmental institutions such as Dinas Social or collaborations with NGO or non-profit institutional uh, can prevail um, and can beat that uh, possibility when we don't have enough money. Yeah. Okay, maybe just. Uh... I think it's really uh, I think uh, maybe CSR or approach their philanthropies. Maybe uh, they have different level of autism. I think uh, you can try to find it. 
uh, and it will become like additional funding for this in order to make sure that this project will be sustainable. Maybe that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we will continue uh, from Rafi. Yeah. We, will, we still have 17 minutes for the session. Okay, thank you very good. Uh, good morning, sorry, Zen. Let's, let's go straight uh, into it. Well, my first question for the opener, how long did it take to write your paper? Thank you. I made, I, I, I wrote this paper, I think within five days, I think a week, five, five days until a week, uh, preparations for making this paper until it's finished. And what did I do, or what did I do for the research? Basically, I do some research for you know, what is autism, autistic, and what is characteristic of autism, as you may can see in our uh, first chapter. And also, I also research about I also research about uh, the potential of the people with autism. Is there any potential, or uh, are, uh, what are the potential, and also what are the uh, hurdles that the people with autism face in uh, society? Now? And also, I also do the research with. Um, some in some uh, school and also some uh, institutional, non profit institutional, where I try to find the proof, uh, as you can see in my uh, lab in the park, as a proof that the drawing or the paintings of the people with autism is good and can be commercialized. Okay, thank you for the follow up question. I see that you've done uh, quite that research on autism, right? So, just out of uh, is there any reason on why you chose autism specifically? How about other conditions such as Down syndrome? Because I have uh, relatives with Down syndrome. This is asking. I think it is, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, first part of the presentation, it is my personal experience where I have been living with people with autism. I have been still living with people with autism. So I know. Uh, how how difficult it is to become people with autism, and besides that, I also find him, uh, my friends, my colleagues with people with autism, that they have potential, uh, such as for him, his name is if I may say, uh, his name is Raihan Ifikar. He's now uh, a student in PNJ. If you can believe that he is now this big person and he got to college and he got the potential. He, uh, he memorized the Al Quran and juice, if I'm not mistaken, and also uh, he can play drums. He, he, he usually uh, <coughs> is in front of all of us, in front of a lot of people, and also even now, I think last week he made a single, he, he made a song, he made, he made a music. So I believe that the potential inside the people with autism is very big. I think that is the reason why I chose because I have my personal experience. I think I, I believe that there are other conditions that can be that have that have potential, but I don't have any personal experience rather than uh, the people with autism. Okay, I'm very sad. Uh, straight to the next question here. Yeah. Uh, regarding the, this project, uh, how many people? Be enrolled into this program, especially for the first time, it can be considered as a pilot project, right? Okay, thank you for the questions. Uh, if I may ask, uh, what, uh, what you are trying to say is uh, how much the people with autism color or the um, the people who are the thing? Uh, the oh, okay. Uh, I believe that basically I don't have any exact number because uh, after we will need to discuss and collaborate more and coordinate more with the institutional, uh, institutional and organizational non-profit non institutional and organizations that is focusing on uh, people with autism. Like we will ask how much, how, how many 
people with autism is in this institution now. Can we collaborate it? But I believe if you want to give that number, I think still we can attend twenty people with autism to join um, our program. And the reason is the reason is because we are in creative industry, so we we, we also need the creativity. So I think fifteen to twenty percent with autism can give and can um, supply the uh, difference and also a creative uh, artworks, especially paintings. Okay. Based on your projection, will it increase the number or what? Uh, say? I think at first it 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 will, it will have the exact exact same number, but if the interest is going high, I think we can we can add more for the uh, people with autism to join the uh, project, but also the number of people with autism that join the project is increased. It means that the team itself, the internal team, the organizational structure in the team will also be increased. Uh, that's all from me. Actually, I have four the fourth question, but you have answered earlier. You will be collaborating with the social department. Okay, that's it. Thank you, There is already two or three similar projects. The most famous one is called Ditos Adventure. It's exactly the same plan, it's exactly the same uh, course of action that what we are doing. So selling people who is autistic and selling his artwork uh, in, <coughs> in showcases usually develop a foundation. So I think you should use that as a comparison. And most importantly, because you are trying to answer uh, inequality as a team, one of the points in inequality as a team is sustainability of income. Not just growth creation, but sustainability of income. So I get the question from Ibu Iba was very relevant. How sustainable is this? There is only one source of income. So you haven't answered the issue of sustainability in this. My question for you is, how many types of autism are there? Is there only one? And how does it affect these many, these types of autism? How does it affect the people who are Please. Thank you, Bhavadagi, for the inputs. It's very entertaining, and I will make it as comparison to uh, develop my ideas more. And also, uh, for the question, for the first question about the sustainability income, I think um, because for now, uh, like yesterday, I just realized that there is a problem with that sustainability income. So, uh, my answer is uh, that I believe. Uh, because it's a social business that the interest is high, uh, it can help with, with, with the open donations and also collaborating with global institutional. I think we can hope to sustainability income, but I believe that and I agree that the answer is still not answering the sustainability income because, to be honest, I haven't thought, I haven't thought about it. Uh, the about sustainable income. And for the second question, how many types of autism? Autism, as far as I know, autism is a spectrum. So we cannot uh, divide, we cannot decide which group is it, uh, the, how many types of the autism, because uh, autism is a spectrum where there is a person with autism that can um, act and that they, 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 can, they cannot communicate well, they, they, they can communicate well with uh, the society. That, and there is also the uh, people with autism that uh, they talk much, they, uh, they, they can they can talk to, they can uh, run all over the place. I think, uh, so I think my answer is for the, how many types of 
metabolism, there's a lot of steps. And there is, as the research say, also it is a spectrum of autism. Yeah, so I think there is a topic for you that try to categorize spectrums of autism into five. And consequently, this growing body of research also suggests that certain people that is in the current or in a certain stage of the autistic spectrum can do certain work. So because your premise is people with autism can work, right? Because you mentioned job interviews, uh, communication as a prerequisite, not in a job, but that's different. Okay. There are many other, there are a lot of types of jobs out there that can be done by autistic people. Right? So I think there is a huge leap of inclusion in identifying the problem and then coming to a solution. So I think that needs to be worked on. My last question is, have you identified what is actually the market yeah, of the painting industry in Indonesia? Right? What is the size of the market of the painting industry in Indonesia? And what percentage of that market are you trying to capture? <coughs> or your conclusion is not, because on the main stages of the work plan, marketing and sales, that implies you're trying to grab a market of the art industry in Indonesia, right? So do you know how many paintings are sold each year? And what percentage of that market are you trying to capture? Or the conclusion, because you mentioned donations and everything. You're not trying to sell painting, right? You're trying to you're trying to get education. You're trying to establish a foundation, right? The gimmick, the show is that they the gimmick of the show is that this, these are paintings by people who have autism. People are the three you. That's your end goal. That has been done multiple times across history. That's basically how foundations work, right? They sell art craft, they sell paintings, they sell whatever it is, people with disability, right? Uh, so I don't think there's a novelty here. So, have you done any research on the on the creative industry, specifically on the app uh, and uh, the, the, how big the market is? Thank you, Bob, for the inputs and also the questions. So, basically, if you say that I don't sell paintings, uh, I agree that I don't sell paintings because. Uh, okay. So, I don't media. So, basically, uh, we. We have started the we have the paint in the paper or the canvas, but we digitalize it. Then we apply it on other media such as um, t-shirts, hoodies, tote bag, and uh, even uh, hats. Right. So if uh, the question is, have I uh, conducted any research on those markets? I haven't done it because I don't, I don't know the presentation about the uh, painting industries and also about the uh, industry create the creative industries where uh, we sell these uh, products. So basically it's not a painting sell, but it is a close uh, 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 accessories, accessories uh, uh, sales, accessories markets. And I also haven't done any research about the number or the percentage of uh, market inside that field. And also, uh, once again, I think uh, my main goal is not to gain uh, donations. Uh, they can donate. Uh, we will accept donation. But the main stage, the main, the main, uh, the main thing is that we commercialize it and we got the profit for that. And as I find in my paper, uh, the distributions of the money is based on the profit. So 90% of the profit of the sales. Um, can be distributed to the people with autism. And 10% will be distributed for you know, And I believe for the open donation, it's not categorized as uh, profits because it will, uh, uh, as, I think, 
So far, I think that open donations, the results for, from the open donation will become uh, our operational and also our uh, capital to start to produce the uh, products. Uh, since it's uh, two minutes left, I guess all the judges already asked the questions. So it's going to be the end of the presentation for Fanzan. We give applause for Fanzan. Thank you, Fanzan. Okay, next. For the drone. Just the same as the um, previous contestant, you will have 30 minutes, uh, 15 minutes for your presentation and then you will have uh, 30 minutes for the Honorable judges and lecturers. Today I'll be presenting my paper about education, development, and legal aid strategies from traditional merchant through market made easy website. So, to start everything off, it's important to take a look at what's the underlying reasons about the topic that I brought up today. On the top right of the poster, as you can see right here, we see that. There are around 16,000 units of traditional market across Indonesia based on statistics that accounts for a high capacity of job provisions for labor and thus contributes to the whole GDP of MSMEs and the whole GDP of Indonesia as well. However, it's not all smooth sailing for the traditional version as there are several obstacles that are faced by this traditional market itself. Number one, there are at least three main problems that hamper the productivity of these traditional merchants to develop. Such as, first, there's a low digital, legal, and financial literacy. This is an inherent issue because not all of them are educated and was the result of a structural problem. This looks like the fear of engaging with banks, for example, because of their consumer values, for example, and ability to diversify payment methods and so on. So, the question then becomes, why are these problems become so important? Ladies and gentlemen, in a scenario when a consumer would like to buy a product, for example, in a traditional market, but they do not have any cash, the first alternative that they will do is to go to a place where they allow the payments, such as debit cards, cures, and so on. Obviously, this 
place looks like a hypermarket or modernized market itself. Therefore, the impacts of this is that the traditional market just loses another opportunity for consumers to buy products for them. Obviously, this will result into lowering the amount of profit that they have each day. So this is just one case, but there's a possibility where people face the same condition, which at the end of the day will also contribute to lowering the, the amount of profit that they will get. To add more context, um, fellow lecturers, there are, in a digitalized era, people demand efficient, face-paced activity that can save more time to mobilize or even to move more productively. But, however, the situation makes them more vulnerable because not only that it's hard for them to sell the products, but also the competition between the modern markets itself. So that's why it makes them a vulnerable actor in this, um, in this basketball. As a result, they would just rely on the regular consumer, but not expanding their markets further. That, that answers why the first problem is inherently important to begin with. Moving on to the second one, which is inaccessibility in terms of legal aid. So legal aid becomes inaccessible for these tra traditional merchants due to several factors, such as lack of socialization from the government, or even lack of people think that it's expensive to gain legal aid, for example, or they think that it's not something common to get legal aid as a traditional merchants, because simply it's not something that they are very familiar with. What makes this problematic is because inaccessibility to legal aid is an embodiment of no access to justice. Considering that provision of legal aid is stated under the Article 48 in Government Regulations Number 7, 2021, who stated that central government is obliged to give legal aids and services. Moving on to the last <clears throat> problems that I encounter about this topic is because regarding stagnancy within the traditional market. So, having to go through the 5.0 digitalized era is not an easy task for these traditional merchants. The reason is because, first, competition that I have mentioned before with modern market is hard. Because if we take a look at the current status quo, how this traditional market and also the, the traditional market and also the modern market is located, usually the distance is not very far. Therefore, in this one side, there's a traditional market, and in the other side, you can see it in the hypermarket, and so on and so forth. This makes options for consumers to buy is more diversified. Therefore, the uniqueness of this traditional market might be overshadowed by this modern market. And secondly, why there's a lot of stagnancy that happens with the traditional market is because there's a limited product innovation. That um, the inability for these traditional merchants to innovate or further develop their own business is going to be a difficulty for them to innovate and also move forward as a merchant. Therefore, the solution that we need to have is something that would answer all of the concerns that I've mentioned before. So, to make all of these make sense, we need a solution towards a problem that is mentioned before, which is called Market Made Easy website that exists right here. So, moving on to the bottom part of my posters. So, first of all, let's start from the education feature. So, it might sound simple at first, but the mechanism will be helpful as it will adhere to the needs of the traditional merchants. For example, understanding that they do have limited time because they have to sell while at the same time um, engaging with the uh, consumers and so on, this type of education will adhere to, the, to their needs in a form of embedded learning. It means that it will be very flexible in a form of the thing that they would like to learn is based on the topic itself. For example, if they want to diversify the payment method, pick the courses or skills that are related to their needs. So it's not in a form of like a big lecture where they, where they, will, where they would have to watch it on and on and on, but it's simply uh, according to the needs that they have. So say a merchant would like to diversify their payment method by creating cures or an electric data capture, simply clueless or does not know how. 
because they're not familiar with it and so on and so forth. So what they can do is just simply visit the website of Market Make Easy and follow through the instructions. Why is the solution will be a hope for them? Because at the end of the day, they can, um, the fear for them to engage with banks and formal institutions can be tackled with that because this is, this will be a stepping stone for them to get them, get them, get them familiar with this type of payment methods, for example. And then moving on to the second feature of my innovation, which is the legal, uh, the legal system within the websites. So understand that sometimes the fear of engaging with formal institutions and other um, other related stakeholders like banks and so on exist within the traditional market. That's why it's hard for them to innovate or, for example, gaining loans and so on. However, through this uh, website, you can actually create a one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one consultation program, for example, through the um, cooperation with Albeha and also uh, TAI and also the Ministry of Commerce. So what it means is that if they do have some needs, for example, to draft an argument or, a, a, sorry, to draft an agreement or other related legal uh, needs, they can just simply visit the website and um, conduct, a, uh, conduct a session with the stakeholders that are related. That's the second uh, part of the feature that will help them. And last feature of this website is basically called financial consultation. What it, what's so important about this financial consultation is that understand that in the digitalized era, this traditional market is a way for them to expand their market. For example, ways for them to commercialize um, their products, for example, or to compete with other modern markets. However, sometimes, as we all know, not all of them have uh, necessary education to begin with. That's why their information that are touched by them is very limited. Therefore, we provide a solution where they can conduct a session with this financial consultants as well to consult about their business operations and so on. This will be useful because at the end of the day, uh, they will get advices from formal institutions. At the end of the day, will help them expand their business. And lastly, the question and the concern remains, how would we engage or attract them to visit the, our website in the first place? So, one of the innovations that I come up with called Incentive Program, what it means is that we'll create a innovation competition for these traditional versions in a form of proposal, proposal submission that consists of innovation program or proposal in which the ones who will win this um, incentive program will deserve a cash or a source of prizes provided by the government as well. Obviously, this sort of incentives will attract them to actually register their profile into our website and furthermore participate into this innovation program. At the end of the day, it will create a trickle down benefit. Why? Because the source of innovation is something that is necessary that comes within themselves. Because nowadays, stagnancy is a real thing around the traditional market. So this solution will help them to expand their business further. So um, I can say what's, uh, what's good about this solution is that it creates a concrete method to address uh, the real problems faced in traditional merchants. And with that, uh, we hope that this will be an answer for the concerns faced by the traditional merchants. And that is all for me. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Thank you, um, Marisa. Um, judges, you will have 30 minutes for the question and answer session. Maybe. Yeah, you start first. Yeah, okay. when you will start first. Okay. Marisa. Okay, once. Why is that? Okay, one simple question. Why, why do you choose website? I don't think that you know, traditional merchant will know how to use it. Yeah. You know, if you want to, to go to the website, you need to, to open the browser. I don't, think, sir, I don't think they are familiar with those kind of uh, platforms. Okay, so 
Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Because yeah, you explicitly mentioned a website. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the question. So perhaps we can go through why utilizing a website in a bit. Some. Why not application? Okay. All right. So there are four. Yeah. You know that application is uh, considered uh, friendly. Yeah, more friendly than a website. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, allow me to answer the answers that is mentioned. So first of all, there is one of the bigger reasons why I decided to use my website is because um, the concern that I just mentioned before, basically, this traditional mark, uh, these traditional merchants have the difficulty or fear to engage with like formal, formal institutions banks and so on. So having it right in the form of a website will be a more friendly way for them to engage. But however, if the comparison why then uh, why are we not using application? So there's four reasons why. First of all, it is platform free, which means that regardless your phone is, regardless your brand uh, your phone brand is, this website can be accessed. Because, for example, there's several applications that might be able to be accessed with through Apple, but it's not um, accessible with Samsung or other um, sets of brands uh, of their phones. That's right. And secondly, it's more easily accessed. What it means is that um, you can just simply visit the browser and just tap on the link. Um, in comparison to application, and you, have, you do have to download it first. And furthermore, what makes it important is that if there are several um, installments like Papa had one, you need to re-update that on and on and on, which makes a lot of hassle for them to re-update it. But website is something that is automatically updated. So once you reload it, it will automatically absorb the update that is put by the uh, web engineer. And lastly is because geographical barrier barriers there are traditional some traditional market merchants that are located in a more marginalized era. So having it through a website will help them to access Okay. Uh, I wonder whether you have to conduct a preliminary research on that yeah. because yeah, well, I don't think that uneducated uh, people will like it or they are more familiar with using browser. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, because you have to consider from their own perspective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know that. Uh, uh, developing an application is uh, quite costly, but if you want to make this program succeed, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, maybe you, you need to think to use uh, an application that is uh, the first question. Okay. And then it's quite interesting. Why you choose KAE? Because KAE is on the bottom of the uh, association. Yeah, you have other Established or maybe uh, yeah, you have other established or maybe uh, um, more uh, members. So the reason why I decided to use Kai because there's a precedent. That, um, the reason why I decided to use Kai because there's a precedent. That, um, that okay, traditional merchants. And that they have engaged with a lot of um, cases in regards to traditional margins. So having collaboration with them will probably be easier as their focus as one of their focus is already about like um, addressing the issues that is faced by traditional other Perhaps that uh, addressing the issues that is faced by traditional other Perhaps that the members. Number of the and other um, yeah, probably it's not as many, but I believe that we can expand more because, um, as um, what I just said before as well, the cooperation will not only be limited to them uh, as well. So there are possibilities where we engage in cooperation with other institutions. Okay, but you see, there should be a definite. On that. Okay. Okay. Uh, last question. We got the well, 
you you will need a lot of money to tell this yeah you're mentioning that you will uh, provide some courses how would you justify those courses in terms of the financial issue yeah in implementing those courses and as you, you mentioned before this is the target market is uh, for the uh, the salary, yeah the person which yeah they will focus more on selling the product than learning something so you think that they would likely to want you to join the courses why don't you uh, rather than uh, going to their uh to please yeah and and how what they really need. Okay, um, so sorry, um, about the previous question. So, um, so the game, uh, uh, I think I was a bit blank because of the battery. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, what kind of course is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so in terms of financial issues, so in, the, in my paper, I wrote that this program will be held under the Ministry of Commerce. So, Ministry of Commerce, but like, um, other than that, it might seem a bit like um, it might be a bit thing to do, but I would say that it's something that is worth it because the comparison is that based on my interview with um, the local tradition merchants around my area too. Because the comparison is that based on my interview with um, the local tradition merchants around my area too, they find it um, <laughs> fearful to face banks or other people that are uh, coming from the formal institutions. So having it through website would be easier because one of the features provided in my website as well is basically financial consultation where they can conduct a face-to-face -face session with the financial consultants, which helps them um, a lot in um, addressing or absorbing the information. So perhaps that would be the answer. Well, you have to consider the money. I mean, yeah, if you provide someone, yeah, Let's say office hours daily to ready to to answer any question. Yeah. Well, I don't think that would work here. Okay. Allow me to answer. Um. So this platform is actually similar with, for example, HelloDoc or other platforms that are related. So but they are paid. They have to pay. Yes. Um. That's true. But. Um, to some certain extent, I feel like um, this program is something that is still can be realized because of the, um, if there are some questions that are, um, I would say default, for example, if they ask how to create curious. Uh, anything you want to ask? Maybe we got it? Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, Lisa, uh, actually, my course more or less are similar with uh, me about the uh, artist info, but not uh, maybe I will more focus on uh, see the problem with uh, <coughs> sometimes studying this competition, not only this year, but also last year. Uh, you think you can solve all the problems you see? Website or application. Meanwhile, if you find or do you Google, there are a lot of similar website. The government have a lot of website, but still underutilized. So we don't want this project to become another digital trash that exists, but not literally working. Uh, because in this website form, they must actively seek for education, consulting, and all, and. Meanwhile, the small business owners not really have a lot of time to do that. Usually they are busy doing business uh, and they don't have time to like, 
seeking the information through the website. So how is your solution to approach them? See, because uh, in this solution, you need the I have found another similar issue with uh, how they're busy and so on. So one of the features that I provide in the website as well is that the ability to have a face-to-face -face session with this financial consultant. So they don't have to necessarily be watching the video or like the courses on and on and on, but they can simply conduct a session which is face-to-face -face with the people that will collaborate within this project. That's first. And second, so as I mentioned before, the education will be in a form of embedded learning as well. So it will not be like what happened online with the video or um, information, but it will be adjusted to how um, they can absorb the materials more easily. For example, it will be a very direct and also in a form of topics instead of just a general economic um, topic at the end of the day. And secondly, what are the differences between other similar websites that is uh, providing the same um, services? So to answer that, Actually, um, I would I would admit there is an existing financial consultants through website and other forms of consultation, but I believe that what is different is the accessibility, which means that it is integrated at the point. Because usually um, traditional versions, I believe, have a difficulty in accessing information. If they want to consult about finance, where should I go? Or if they want to consult about legal, where should I go? But the piece will be in a form of one door, so they will just have to visit the website and just um, click on the necessary means that they would go through. So this will make it easier for them, as it will be accessible for um, the range of needs that they have. Perhaps that will be the answer. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, my question is Have you considered government regulation number seven from the If yes, what are your thoughts on government, government regulation, especially uh, the protections that government regulation provides for small micro uh, businesses? Thank you for the question. So I believe that the program regulation number seven in regards to um, specifically Article 48 to provide legal services for these um, small medium enterprises. So my concern with this um, regulation is that it does address the provision of legal services. However, first of all, the weaknesses is not properly socialized, and second, it's not specifically addressed for the traditional merchants rather just for the small medium enterprises because in the existing status quo there is no specific regulations for the legal protection of the traditional merchants why this website will be in a form of like balance um, for the current uh, legal protections that is can be said non-existent so that's why um, I believe that this legal provided in the website and help this traditional merchants to um, gain access to justice. So the difference is that traditional merchants is um, there is um, there is a possibility of negotiation or that is first and second Micro entrepreneurs is a productive venture owned by individuals or business entities or proprietorships that falls under the criteria of micro entrepreneurs. I don't see traditional markets and micro entrepreneurs as defined in government regulations. Two. Your answer was the problem with government regulation seven is that it's under socialized. What happens if this becomes socialized? What happens to us? Because this not only provides the arms of the state of the country, 
which is the most powerful. Not only it assures legal assistance up to representation in court, it also assures in Articles 49 to 50 state and regional funding for this legal assistance. So my, my question then becomes, if this, I have no doubt that I don't, we don't, I, I, do you have any information as to the implementation of this, aside from the issue of association? Thank you. Okay, what, what is going on with this? Is, is this? is this happening right now? Okay, so to answer that, <laughs> I would agree that it is under socialized, the government regulations, but however, the problem does not just stop there. What it means is that this government regulation exists as a basis, but however, it doesn't ensure that this um, traditional merchant would like to gain or obtain this level of services simply because it is not something that is common among them or it's not something that is familiar with them. So this website serves as a medium for the government to approach them instead, for them to know that this um, regulations exist and this provision of legal aid exists. So that's why to ensure that these traditional merchants are able to gain access to legal aid, website which is uh, which um, comes the basis from the government regulations if um, that answers your question Mom. and then uh, furthermore i believe that it is uh, more of an accommodating each other so the government regulations accommodate the website and vice versa so so that's different so two things uh how is it a website. How is it that you can say that a person that requires not just a phone but a smartphone, not just a smartphone but with data package? About all that, the ability of the traditional entrepreneurs to operate the smartphone and navigate a website. How is it possible for you to conclude all that is more accessible than regional governments, than dinas dinas usaha at every week, that these traditional markets see every day, face to face? How is a website more accessible than face to face government officers that they can see and come to their offices? To seek for legal aid. That's one. Two, you're proposing a solution to a problem that you said there are traditional markets, right? There are traditional markets, and they have an issue with not being provided with legal aid or assistance. There is, there is no problem. The government has a specific regulation to combat that. The, the, the regulation actually says ease of business protection and empowerment of cooperatives and micro, small, and middle businesses, mid, mid sized businesses. So you're now pivoting. You're now saying that, oh, the problem is not that there is no legal 